day, we have Houston Chronicle meteorologist Justin Ballard here with us today to talk about how I-10 is somewhat of a dividing line between areas that seem to get the brunt of the storms and those that don't. So welcome so much to the show, Justin. It's Thanks good to have you. Me again. And I know we talk about this a lot. You know, we'll be talking in meteorology mm -hmm. and, you know, and just giving the weather forecast. And we're like, oh, we expect it north or south of I-10. Yeah. But a lot of the times people say that south of I-10 really gets the brunt of the storms. Why is that? And it makes sense, right? If you think about where we're located in, in relation to the coastline and where I-10 kind of cuts us in half, it really all depends on where exactly you live in southeast Texas. And, you know, as far north as College Station Bryan, all the way down to Galveston, it really does matter. So Texas has 10 different, very distinct climate regions. And you're seeing a little snippet there of the, of the article that I wrote late last week, 10 different climate regions. Three of those climate regions, Rachel, make up Southeast Texas. So it really does depend mm -hmm. on where exactly you live in relation to these interstates, not just 10, but also 45. We use those interstates kind of as a mile marker. A lot of people, even if they're new to the area, know where they are in relation to those interstates. Yeah, and I've noticed, you know, it's not always, hey, if you're literally just <laughs> north of I-10, you know, you're in the clear. But yes, yes it, I think the climate has to do a lot with it. And you were kind of going through the different types of climates we have here. Yeah, we've got three microclimates. So let's start first with the Gulf Coast Plains. Now, this includes here in Harris County, Galveston, Liberty, Fort Bend, all the way down uh, close to, but not quite to Corpus Christi, coastal marshes. This is really what we're known for in this part of Southeast Texas, obviously the concrete jungle of Houston, but keep in mind, we've got 22 watersheds and bayou systems that work their way through Harris County. So, you know, if you strip away the concrete, we're certainly that fitting that bill. Piney Woods, north of I-10, this of, cor of course has mixed deciduous forests, pines, it's in the name there, Piney Woods. And then we've got what's known as the post oak savanna, prairie and savanna. So, you know, if you take a drive across Southeast Texas, you may see quite a bit of variation in landscapes from, you know, Houston to, you know, let's just say Austin, San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And then if you go northward on I-45, you'll definitely run through the Piney Woods region and, and see the change of scenery. Yeah, and you can definitely tell, you know, how it all reacts. Now, something else that happens too, you know, a lot of the times, you know, especially as we get into spring, mm -hmm. into summer, we get these yeah. sea breezes. Tell us how that kind of affects us and who usually ends up seeing those thunder storms. Yeah, those sea breezes can really flare up. Uh, obviously, they start along the coast and then they can work their way inland and they can work their way inland pretty far. I-10 is almost that perfect kind of dividing line, east to west dividing line between, you know, uh, those more coastal areas and then those more inland areas. So that's why a lot of times storms do, especially during the summertime, favor, you know, coastal or mm -hmm. south of that I-10 barrier. It's not that I-10 is cursed. It's mm -hmm. cursed for many other reasons. Right. If you, if you sat in wise. traffic. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but it's not cursed for, for that at least. You know, it's just kind of that perfect divider almost between inland and coastal areas. And we also have been talking, you know, about the roles we see with severe weather here. Yes. And a lot of the times we will actually see a lot of severe weather north of I-10. Does that mean <laughs> you're safe if you're south? No, but like Obviously in the instance not, yeah. of what we're seeing this week, you know, that could have some factors. It seems like our northern counties are the ones that are under the bullseye. You know, and we were talking about this uh, just a few hours ago before we got in front of the cameras here. And, you know, a lot of the reasons for that, especially this time of the year, is storm track. So storm track plays a big role with a low pressure kind of moving north north of us that obviously keeps the severe weather chances highest north of us. Also, we're so close to the coastal influence. We can keep a little bit of what's known as the atmospheric inversion or cap. Mm -hmm. So the lid to the atmosphere essentially could be on it a little closer to Southeast Texas. So that's why we've got over the next uh, day or two, there we go, the severe weather risk for Wednesday favored mainly north of Houston College Station to Conroe in that dark green. And then as we get into Friday, Again, we're looking at some of these same areas north of I-10 with that severe weather risk, slightly higher ingredients possible towards you know the lower and mid Mississippi River Valley, but still something to watch here in Southeast Texas. Yeah, thank you so much for breaking it down for us because just a lot of the times we use it north mm -hmm. of I-10, south of I-10, yep. and I'm sure people notice, you know, depending on where they live, they're like, why do I always get hit with the severe storms? It might just be a, a good portion of your location and also the climate. And we, when we say south of I-10, we really mean anywhere from downtown Houston to Galveston. If we're talking more coastal, we'll say that. We'll, we'll say the coastal. Yeah. Thank you so much, Justin, for breaking it down. Thank you for having today. me.